Hello, and welcome to a new lecture on Cantera. Today, we will start a new segment uh, that will be on thermochemistry. Here, we will learn how to use Cantera to um, calculate um, all the thermal aspects of reactions. So um, uh, enthalpy of species, enthalpy of reaction, uh, lower heating, higher heating values of your fuel, uh, adiabatic flame temperatures, and so on. Um, I will also use this lecture to sort of make you understand the structure of a Cantera script. Um, there are some essential lines of code that you will always be writing in any script. Um, and um, I'll give you a rundown of exactly how does the flow of logic go in a Cantera script. And we will do this through an example of um, mixing of two uh, streams of gases. Let me show you what that entails. So we will have two streams coming in. One will be for the fuel, the other will be for uh, oxidizer, uh, which will be air in this case. The, uh, and and uh, the fuel stream will have its own temperature, pressure, and um, uh, composition, species composition, which will be methane in this case, 100% methane. And there'll be oxidizer as well, um, which will have temperature, pressure, uh, and, and uh, species um, composition. And, and in this case, it will be air, so it will be 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. Both of these streams will come in and uh, form a mixture. And then finally, we will get some temperature, pressure, and molecular uh, composition out. Uh, so we will use Cantera to um, calculate the properties of the mixture. I mean, when these two streams mix, what is the final mixture that we get? Uh, that is what Cantera will tell us. So let's, um, let's start and I'll bring up spider. Uh, all right, so this is spider and this is the code. Let me um, change the tab for now, <coughs> excuse me. Before starting out, uh, let me quickly give you a general overview about the, can, the uh, spider um, Python editor that you see on the screen. Uh, it has certain sections. I'll just quickly go through that. So um, the biggest one here on the left you see is the text editor. Um, this is where you will be writing all your scripts. And with a small click of, of the display button, you can run the script. Uh, this here is the console, Python console. And when you run the script, you will see the outputs here in the console. Um, uh, the console can also be used to run individual lines of code. So you don't really have to uh, write the whole code. You can just type one line, enter, and the uh, console will run the line. And, and we'll see how that is done. Um, then the next, uh, we have a couple of, uh, okay, here is a history tab. If you go to history, then you have all of the uh, commands that have been uh, typed in the console. So you'll have a history of all of those commands and we'll, we'll look at that too. Then um, for now, let me just quickly clear the entire history. Ooh, <laughs> a lot of it. Oh, okay. Um, so we'll start fresh. Um, then here on the top right, you see there are a couple of tabs. One is the variable explorer. This is where any, so when you run a script, the script will generate a couple of variables um, and that they could be matrices, they could be uh, just complex variables, integers, floats, whatever it is. This variable explorer will show you all of them and you can also check the value of the, of the variable here. Then there's a help section. This, uh, this uh, gives you a short uh, amount of help uh, if you want. So all you have to do is just go to um, uh, the, the, the term that you need the help for, take your mouse to that term and uh, hit control I and uh, the help, whatever help is available, it will be displayed here. Then you have the plots tab. This is where uh, if, you're, if your script has generated some plots, this is where you can see them. It also has on the right, you will see a, an entire history of plots, uh, of all the plots that you've generated in this session of, uh, of, of Spider. And then <coughs> finally, is a file tab. This is where um, everything that, all the files that are um, in this particular folder, in my case, this will be the uh, documents folder. Um, all of those files can, are visible here and you can open the files by double clicking them. So let's quickly now jump to the code. This is the code, the Cantera script for 
mixing of two uh, gases. The first line is import Cantera as CT. This is an essential line. It'll be in all of your scripts. Um, what this says is that this is import is a function inside Python. It's a Python related command. Um, it is similar to say include command in C or C++. This tells a Python that, um, that you are importing an external module into uh, this session. So all of the functions, so here we have imported Cantera. So all of the functions and um, all the properties of Cantera now are accessible to us in this um, session. And then we go on to say that import Cantera as CT. CT here is an alias. So whenever we use a Cantera function, we don't always have to write Cantera dot function name, et cetera. You just have to write CT in place of Cantera. And this can, can be anything. I mean, you can name it as whatever you want. You could, you could say import Cantera as TC or anything else. And then you just get to use that alias wherever uh, you find Cantera commands. So you just uh, write uh, the alias then, like I've written here. So now, <sighs> Going to the second line, it says gas equals ct dot solution within parentheses. It has gri thirty dot yaml. Um, here we have defined an object called gas of the solutions class. This class belongs to Cantera. So we define an object of the solutions class, and we also pass this. Um, <clears throat> and the input data file GRI 30 to this command. Um, so this class is actually used to define a phase by specifying um, an input data file here. Uh, this input data file, and we will we'll take a look at this input data file, but as we've already seen in the previous lectures, the input data file contains a definition of, um, of the phase. Um, it contains all the species that are found in the phase. Um, uh, it, it contains all the elements, all the reactions and so on. And, and we'll take a look at that too. So GRI 30 is a very uh, sort of a well-known reaction mechanism. And let me show you, let me give you some, um, some information on that. Okay. All right. So GRI MEC 3.0, this is a very well-known and a very famous uh, reaction mechanism. Uh, this was developed by the Gas Research Institute, uh, which I think now is known as Gas Technology Institute in Chicago. Um, so GRI MEC 3.0 is an optimized mechanism designed to model natural gas combustion, including NO formation. So it has uh, all the species, all the elements, all the reactions necessary to model methane combustion or natural gas combustion. And using this reaction mechanism, you can also um, uh, find out how much NO is created and, and, and you can um, do calculations on the NOx chemistry as well. So that is a GRI mechanism. But let me also, uh, let's quickly also see, uh, take a quick look at this input data file, gri30.yml. So we've already seen in the previous videos where to find uh, GR, the, the input data files in Kentera setup. So this is exactly where I've opened it. It was in my uh, user directory. Uh, the entire path is actually given here, right on, uh, on the top. Um, so again, uh, like we've seen earlier, it starts with the name of the generator, the input files that were used to generate this reaction mechanism, uh, the version of Kentera, when was it done, and so on. Um, then uh, here you see all the elements, and here are all the species. I think there are 53 species, if I'm not wrong. Um, and then uh, you, you have the uh, the thermodynamic data related to each of this. This is for hydrogen. Similarly, you'll have others as well, um, like which ones? Uh, let me see. 
So OH, for example, this is for OH. And so this is the thermodynamic data. And then you also have the transport data um, along with it. And then finally, if you scroll down, you'll see these are all the reaction. This is the reaction database, all of the reactions included. Uh, so surprisingly, uh, methane. <laughs> So we just simply write methane plus oxygen gives CO2 plus H2O. That's a global reaction. Um, the detailed reaction, there are lots of reactions. So when, and again, you'll read all of this in your uh, theoretical combustion course, but whenever say methane goes on to form uh, CO2 plus H2O, it just does not go there in one reaction. It has, it goes through a series of reactions and then finally gets to a, a carbon dioxide and water. Uh, formation. So uh, all of these are the reactions that uh, methane has to go through in order to finally form carbon dioxide and, and water. So this is the uh, input data file. So what you do to start with, and again, this will also be the first line in almost all of your uh, Cantera script. So you need to know this as well. Um, so you'll have uh, a, an object of the solutions class and you'll pass on a um, input data file um, as, as well. In this case, we have a GRI, 3, uh, GRI 30. Um, you can have any other as well, depending on what kind of reactions are you modeling, or what kind of system rather are you modeling. Okay. Um, and so let's let's do, do one thing. Let's um, run these commands one by one uh, in this console, like we uh, had promised earlier. So copy this and I hit enter. Now Cantera has been imported into the um, into, into spider. I take this and this line here, uh, which is preceded by this pound sign, anything after the pound sign is considered as a comment. So this is not, not run by the interpreter. So you just copy this line, say paste. All right, so now the object has been created. Let us look at the gas. Uh, object. So <clears throat> this is what Cantera has done after calling out this line. Cantera has defined a gas with 100% hydrogen. So mole fraction and mass fraction are one for um, are one for hydrogen. So this entire gas comprises of just hydrogen. The temperature has been set at uh, 300. The pressure is atmospheric pressure. There's a density, uh, mean molecular weight. This again comprises of uh, hydrogen because that is all there is. In this gas, uh, but wh why why did Cantera do this? So Cantera did this just in accordance with the input data file. So if we take a look at the input data file again, um, let's see. Okay, so if we go to the top, you see hydrogen is the first species, and so what Cantera does, it takes the first species and it assigns that species to the entire gas. It says, okay, uh, I see that the first species is hydrogen. Uh, so let the entire gas be made of hydrogen. And that is what it has done here. Yeah. Um, the temperature of 300 is uh, again, a default temperature. That is uh, what Cantra sets every time you call this line. Um, and more atmospheric pressure as well. The density here has been calculated using the ideal gas law. And so if we were to change the temperature, the density will change as well. Now, for that, let, let's take a quick look um, how to do a couple of other things. Now, <clears throat> the solutions class has a very good help available as well. So if you just go to Cantera website, You just go to Cantera website. Let's let's start. Okay, you can go to Cantera website. Go to documentation. The first one here it says objects representing phases, solutions, pure flows, etc. Just click on this line, and you see all of this detailed uh, help files. It'll tell you um, what all is possible with each uh, class. In this case, we are looking at at uh, this at the solutions class. Uh, and again. There's no need to be intimidated by all of this uh, text. We will, um, I will tell you many of the very important commands. So uh, all the important functionalities, all the important functions of each uh, class, I will, um, I will, uh, I will already already give you, and so you will have a good basis. And uh, and from there, 
you can use these help files to grow. So um, I, I'm, I'm just showing you this help file so that you know uh, where to access information if you want to. Um, but otherwise, we will be going through the important and useful functions one by one. All right, so this is also available here in the console, by the way. If you just type help, say gas, which was the object of the solutions class, and you hit enter, this entire help that you saw um, on the web page is also available here. And so there is an, an interesting thing that you will see. And there are certain um, combinations of properties mentioned here. DP, the density and the pressure, uh, DPX, density, pressure, mole fractions. So it says get slash set density. You can use these combinations and um, either get the information out or set the state of the gas using all of these. Um, and some important ones are, something that I use very often is this TPX. Because, so, so this, using TPX, you can set the temperature, pressure, and the mole fractions or the, or the species composition of a gas. Uh, I find this very easy because you almost always know what is the temperature, pressure, or the molecular composition that you would like to set. Um, any other um, uh, combination of properties, say, for example, if you have S, SPX, now, if you happen to know entropy, which in some cases you will, but not in most cases, but if you happen to know entropy, and then in that case, you can use this um, combination to assign values. Otherwise, um, TPX, TPY, these work very well for me. So let's go ahead and, and see how to use it. So right now, this is the current state of the gas. And so I can get, um, information as well. So I say gas dot TP. This was also one of the combinations. And I'll, I'll show you that too. Um, so it says temperature is 300. Pressure is 101325, which is atmospheric. So if you scroll up, you will see TP is one of the um, combinations, is one of the pairs. So you can use TP. Um, now I can also use TP to, it said get slash set the state of the gas. So uh, using gas.tp enter, I've, I received this information from Kentera. I can also say gas.tp equals 600 comma 101325. Now it will set the temperature and pressure of the gas to 600 Kelvin and 101325 Pascal. Now, if I hit, if I write gas and I hit enter, now you see the temperature has changed. And also the density will have changed. It is 0 0.04097. I can again go back to the previous temperature and see what that will do. So I can say 300, enter. And now if I, and by hitting the up arrow, uh, you can actually go uh, to the previous commands. And if you go to history, you will see, see all of these previous commands are being recorded. Now, if I hit enter, so now see the temperature is back to 300. The density is now, is, is greater. Earlier it was 0 0.04, 0 0.0409. Now, when the temperature has dropped, now the density has gone up to 0 0.08184, All right, so, so this is how um, we, we use um, the, the object of solutions class. Um, and there are certain, um, property combinations that you can use to get or uh, assign uh, the state of the gas. Um, so I would say, well, that was all for, for this particular lecture. I don't want to make this too long. Um, so I'll, I'll see you in the next one. And in that, in that lecture, we will go through the remaining part of the script. Thank you.